All right, today we're gonna make a spring wire. Uh, I made one for this hammer for a, oh, I don't know, it's probably a hundred year old or better uh, Waterbury kitchen clock. Steel plates, so that shows probably a little older. But uh, spring wires are pretty important. Think things like this are gonna make your hammer strike properly or make your chime train function properly. So it's a good way it's a good thing to know on how to make a nice spring wire. Now I've seen them wound up on there and they look like a, a rat's nest. Or when you're tearing a clock apart, uh, you're taking these things off where they're hooked on and they break. Um, a lot of different things, different problems that you can have with spring wires. So it's it's a good idea to learn how to do this quick and easy. Now this is the uh, this is the count lever, lock lever, drop lever uh, apparatus here in this clock, and as you can see, this thing is all bent. It's been all it's been bent. I bet a 50 different times in different places along with the other lever. Um, let me just mention something here quick. This book here by Stephen Conover. I tell you what, uh, if Mr. Conover doesn't want me to have this on the video, he's going to have to let me know. But I just want to say that this book is an excellent book. It, uh, it gets into several different types of chiming mechanisms and really out of uh, all the things with working on a clock, uh, the strike mechanism is one of the can be one of the most daunting. And if not done properly, you end up bending things time and time again, and possibly breaking things. So uh, a good book, Stephen Conover's book. I highly recommend it learned a lot from it. Thank you for making that book. Anyway, uh, this spring wire needs to go on here, in here, for this clock. Now I've done this in the past where I've wound the wire around the uh, arbor and I did that once because I was not satisfied with it. A lot of things happen. You get these in the way, trying to wind it on there tight. It just doesn't look right. The coils are loose. So, um, in the book here, he had an idea for making a little crank handle for making spring wires, and I've used that idea. I did a little different. I made these things. Now, I got one, I got two of them here. I've got uh, a smaller steel handled one. Doesn't matter if it's steel or brass. I've got a little larger diameter here with a couple of different diameters for different diameter arbors. And these were laying around in my shed. They're truck topper clamps or part of a truck topper clamp. And I thought, well, that's going to work great. Bend a little crank handle. I put a washer on here with a little pin and then a washer on there with a little pin so that it you know, stays in there. And then I can take this and mount it in my vise. Works good. Uh, a couple little holes drilled in the ends. We'll see that in a minute. Really helps. It helps to have something sturdy. Now, you could, you could uh, sandwich a crank handle in a couple blocks of wood. And, and, and it would hold it there and you could crank it. You could use your lathe. You could... Uh, you know, wind it around something by hand. I find this a, a little bit better, but uh, imagination will create all kinds of things. So you can make up whatever you want. Uh, spring wire type that I'm using, I've got a couple of different sizes. This is a one that I like to use for a lot of American clocks. It's a 0.0201 inch diameter. Here's uh, a 
This one here I have is a .010. Some different diameters for different strengths, different applications. This hammer, uh, this is the thicker stuff. I use the 0253 stuff for the hammer, which works pretty good there. We'll use uh, 020 for this spring wire. And what I like to do is pull off a pretty fair amount for a couple of reasons. One is it gives me something to hold on to while making this spring wire, or you might call them wire springs. Um, it's all the same, I guess. And two, after I get it on the arbor, I've got plenty left over for pulling up around a pillar post or wherever it needs to go. And then I just nip off the extra. Uh, better to leave it longer than end up short. So we'll stick this in the hole here on this winder. All right, by holding tension on this, we use a pair of pliers. I'm going to hold the back side of this wire and pull on it, and that'll create tension. That'll give me my form of the spring that I want to make. Now, as you see, if I release the tension, that spring gets a little bit bigger. Let's zoom in on that. Okay. So we'll wind up a few coils. Our spring this off voila a nice little spring so we want to get it onto our arbor up into here and basically, we're just going to wind this on. Over that. There. Now, what we'll do is tie that wire to here. Nice little spring wire on there. Not only does it look good, but it's going to function well. So, the way I set this up, straight back off of this, it's going to allow me to pull it up and bend it around my pillar post or whatever and provide the tension. Now, once I get it in the clock and start doing all that, I'll adjust the tension in how I wrap it around all that other stuff. This doesn't need a whole lot, just enough to pull it down to count 
and then to pull it down and drop and lock and not pop back up so that's how we do this those. makes it a little bit easier and it doesn't have to be anything fancy 